It's a fact that the Talmudic Jewish lobby has a nearly 2,000 year history of stifling free speech of those they oppose or those who criticize them. But instead of doing it violently like they did 2,000 years ago to the apostles, they're just now doing it in legal ways or subtle legal ways. Okay? And what they do is they'll use the label of anti-Semitism to stifle freedom of speech. And they'll basically lump criticism of Judaism like what I do, with the criticism criticism of the false religion of Judaism like what I do, uh, in with like, you know, full on neo Nazis or Hitler, you know, fanboys or that kind of stuff. Because they can't actually deal with the with the subject at hand, so they have to try to, you know, change the narrative. But uh, this article is uh, by actually ironically by a rabbi it's uh, about using it says using the label anti-semitism to stifle free speech it's very true because you know if if they don't like what you say they'll just accuse you of being an anti-semite and they're you, know, you lose your job you lose you know essentially your livelihood i mean you know it ruins you and they use that to try to shut down free speech what it says here in the Sun Sentinel, after the November elections, the Jewish federations of North America called upon the incoming Biden administration to broadly apply the controversial International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism across the federal government, as had the Trump administration. The definition anti-Semitism, or sorry, the definition quote, anti-Semitism is a certain perception of Jews which may be expressed as hatred towards Jews. This brief, ambiguous definition is then followed by eleven examples of what anti-Semitism it might look like therein lies the controversy included are examples of anti-israel statements uh, one egregious one egregious example is applying double standards by requiring of israel a behavior not expected or demanded of any other democratic nation now i need to clarify something my stance on israel is i support racial israel the right to be physically in that land and that's pretty much it okay i don't support the false religion of judaism and i most certainly don't support all the sin and wickedness and vice that goes on there you know Truthfully speaking, Israel is far from perfect. They're anything but perfect. Hence, while the time of Jacob trouble, where God puts them through their th uh, puts them through His wrath for seven years. So, you know, I'm not this kind of individual, this, these hy hyper Zionists who like act like Israel can never do any wrong. If anything, Israel is anything but perfect. Look at all the sin and wickedness that goes on there. Why do you think God has to put them through their wrath, through His wrath for seven years? Because they're fur they're the furthest thing from perfect. But I support their their right, the racial Israel, their right to be there in that land. But I do not support the false religion. I need to point that out. But uh, that, so that's my stance on Israel. But in, in the article, it says the concept of double standards is inapplicable in this context. Let me be personal. I hold Israel and my fellow Jews throughout the world to a higher standard, as I do to my own country. Under the IHRA definition, as applied by the Trump administration, before I am permitted to criticize Israel or the U.S. government, I would have to catalog the failures of the other 50 or 60 democracies. That is absurd. Under this definition, I assure you, I could be branded as anti-Semitic, as my hate mail already attests. Trump, by executive order, applied the IRHA definition to title, uh, basically the title, not good at totally rem remembering all the Roman numerals, but essentially it's the Civil Rights Act, which expands, extends protections based on race, color, or national origin. But as the New York Times wrote, Trump essentially defined Judaism as a race or national origin, not just a religion under the Civil Rights Act. And that's the thing too, is that, you know, it's, it's this mentality of criticizing Judaism, or oh, your race isn't anti-Semitic. Judaism, it is a religion, okay? I don't attack racial Israel, I attack their, the false religion of Judaism. See, when I talk about Jews in a negative way, I'm referring to religious Jews, okay? Many of whom are not even of racial Israel. They just follow the religion of Judaism. Same thing how Islam is not just, uh, prim you know, Arabs. You know, there are non-Arabs who follow Islam. So it's not racist to criticize Islam. It's not racist to criticize Hinduism because Hinduism is a religion. It's not, it's not Indian. It's just a religion followed by Indians. Plain and simple. So, you know, calling me racist for criticizing a false religion is no different than calling me racist for criticizing, you know, for, I'll put it this way, calling me racist for criticizing Judaism is no different than calling me racist for criticizing Islam or calling me racist for criticizing Hinduism. And equally as absurd. But continuing on in the article, it says, But the Trump administration, with the blessings of the pro-Israel lobby, using the threat of applying title... Uh, you know, whatever the Roman numerals, to deny federal financial support to universities, pressured them to suppress Palestinian voices against Israel on campus. Trump then declared the boycott against Israel, BDS, the BDS movement, as anti-Semitic. His Secretary of State, Mike 
Pompeo used the IHRA definition to label Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and Oxfam as anti-Semitic for the criticism of Israel. Yeah, the whole thing about this anti-BDS law, uh, since when should it be a crime to, you know, boycott a foreign nation? Last time I checked, I don't recall when foreign nations were subjected to the protections of citizens of, you know, America or, here, or over here in Canada. You see, this, this trying to censor criticism of a nation is, you know, again, it's just Nazi type of censorship of speech that, it, that the uh, Talmudic Jewish lobby doesn't like. The Judeo-Satanist lobby that has been doing this for nearly 2,000 years, but instead of trying to kill their opponents like they did in the Book of Acts, they just try to censor you with legal means. But, but I guarantee you, if, they, if the Judeo-Satanists could kill you for criticizing them, they glad they would. But I just wanted to point that out. Once again, their war on free speech by the Judeo-Satanist lobby that has been going on for nearly 2,000 years. Just the methods have changed, but the goal has not. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.